Good morning, everyone. This is Miss Amber, and you may have seen the announcement that our church has taken a step back to keep everyone safe, and we're going to have church from home for a couple of Sundays. And so this morning, I'm back with you. We are going to look in the Word for another um, lesson, and so let's go ahead. I'm in Psalm chapter 32. So if you can turn to Psalm chapter 32, remember that you can go look in the table of contents so that you can find where you need to be because I really love reading these together with you. Okay, Psalm chapter 32. Um, this is, it says that blessed are the forgiven. That's the title of the psalm. Um, this is a song written by David. King David, and it says, Blessed is the one whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man against whom the Lord counts no iniquity, and whose spirit there is no deceit. Okay, so, so far, this is talking about someone who has sinned, but now their sins are covered. Now their sins are forgiven. Now God's not holding these sins against them. Let's see what their life was like before their sins were forgiven. It says in verse 3, For when I kept silent, that's before I said, I'm sorry, God, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My strength was dried up as by the heat of summer. So, so far they're saying, you know, that everything was more difficult before they confessed their sin, before they said that they were sorry for what they had done wrong. Okay. Um, then verse 5, I acknowledged my sin to you. So acknowledged means I admitted, I said, you know what, I see what I did and I believe I did wrong. And I did not cover my iniquity. They uncovered it. They said, okay, I know I did these things that were wrong. I said, I will confess my transgressions, so those are my sins, the things that he's done wrong, to the Lord. I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Okay, so this is, the, the first five verses is talking about how we, um, how we do things that are wrong, and then we feel bad. But then when we confess to Jesus, and we confess to God, then we can be forgiven for what we have done wrong. So I have something I want to show you about that. Okay, so this jar here is like us, okay? So when you're born, you're just a baby, and as you get older, you start doing some bad things. Maybe you start being mean, maybe you disobey your parents, you lie, maybe you hate. There are different, verse, uh, different sins that we do, things that are against God's law that he does not like. So imagine all these rocks are all these things that I have done bad in my life, okay? Now, I can't get rid of these rocks, um, but when I admit, it said that he acknowledged, he says he admits that, you know what? I have done things that are wrong. I have done, I've sinned a bunch of times, and even just one time, even one sin, God is so good, he can't be friends with us when we have this one sin in our life. We're separated from him because he is so good and he's so perfect. And so, one sin and all these little sins in here, they keep us separated from God. So, but it talks about whose sin is covered over here. It says, blessed is the one whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Well, Jesus made a way for us to be forgiven for our sins. We just tell him that we have done wrong, and we say that we're sorry that we've done wrong, and we believe that Jesus died to cover these sins. Now, I want to show you what covering this looks like, okay? So here I have this red cloth, and this is covering my sin. Now, it's red because I want you to think about Jesus' blood because he died. He spilled his blood to cover all of our sins, okay? So now, when, we, when he's covered our sins and he's forgiven us, it's like we're being emptied out. So here, we're nice and clean again, and we're covered, okay? Well, 
but I'm not perfect after I get saved. I still do bad things. So every day I might do something else. And then, oh, there's another sin. And there's another sin. But that doesn't mean I have to get saved again. I'm always saved. If you've asked Jesus to forgive you for your sins, you're always saved. God always, you are always still covered by the blood of Jesus so that you that you're still saved, even though there might be sin in your life. And God does want to empty that out. He wants to get rid of it. You're still saved. You're still safe. You're covered. And that's pretty neat, huh? Now, I want to show you something else. Okay, so we ask for forgiveness and we keep asking for forgiveness for our sins so we can be cleaned out so that we can serve God in the best of our ability. Okay, but let's just imagine, I don't know, maybe I... There's a while that maybe I'm just sinning and I'm not asking for forgiveness. And there's a bunch of rocks in here. Ooh, Ooh there's a really big one. All right. So there's a bunch of sins here. A bunch of things I've done wrong. I haven't asked for forgiveness in a long time. It doesn't matter. I'm still forgiven from that first time. Now, God wants us to do better because he loves us and he wants us to be happy because these sins will make us feel heavy. This jar is really heavy right now. And it will make you feel really bad whenever you don't confess your sin. You feel guilty and you feel ashamed of yourself. Um, and then sin has consequences too. You know, whenever you lie to your parents and they find out about your lie, what happens? You get in trouble, right? Okay. Now, this is rather small, so I don't think it's a very good way to show you about Jesus and how he forgives. So let me show you something else. There is never too much sin that Jesus can't cover up. Look at this. There's enough blood for everyone. There's enough to cover all of your sins, all of your whole life, and cover other people's sins too when they ask for forgiveness. So there is enough for everyone to go around, and it never runs out. Isn't that amazing? Our God is so good that he made it such a good plan that we can be friends with him, huh? And there's so much forgiveness. That's an amazing thing. And so we don't have to feel heavy. We don't have to feel like... David wrote, you know, that my, um, whoops, turn my page. We don't have to feel like our bones are wasting away. We're groaning and we're upset and feel like God's hand is heavy on us because he's forgiven us. He loves us and he can't be friends um, with us when we're separated from him with sin, but he's made a way that there's just never ending forgiveness for us. Isn't that just wonderful, y'all? Okay. Um, I just wanted to read one more verse for you. Now, this is in the Old Testament was Psalm 32, but I think it's pretty neat that if we flip over to Romans, that's in the New Testament, Romans chapter 4, verse 7, we kind of have this same uh, psalm a little bit requoted, said again for us in a different way. Blessed are those whose lawless deeds are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Y'all, I love that word covered. I feel like I'm just protected. I'm covered. All of my shame and all of my guilt is just gone away with that word covered. Blessed is the man against whom the Lord will not count his sin. Y'all, I don't want to be, I don't want God to count my sin against me because there's a lot. And even just one is too much, and I couldn't be in heaven with that. So now I can live this happy life because I am covered by this never-ending blood of Jesus. Okay, y'all. I love you, and I miss you, and I hope that you and your family are safe. I hope you had a great 4th of July weekend and have a great day together. And I will talk to y'all later.